how you can defend yourself should the need arise. And this is a friendly reminder that these sports are taught for you to protect yourself should the need arise. Not for you to go out and bully somebody. <laughs> now, saying that to say, we are here in the new world where the man doesn't have a mask on his face. Oh! oh I was testing you. Oh! I was testing you. Oh! That, that's a very good guy. I was seeing how long it took. I think it was a minute and four. A minute and four seconds. Oh my God, please put that mask on. Whew. Well, you don't realize, not only for protection from COVID, but I don't like to make them gag either. Sometimes they look at me without the mask and they start to try heaving. That's his defense in the boxing ring. <laughs> All right, let's touch base really quick with a little reminiscing here. Here we go. Up we go. We got a multitude of punches here. The most basic one is the jab. It's the most important one, I think, because it sets everything up. The jab, right? We have the jab, and we have the straight right. We also have an overhand right. We have a left hook, a right hook, a left uppercut, a right uppercut, a left hook to the body, a right hook to the body, and then uppercuts to the body as well, too, All right? So, any of those can be utilized to protect yourself. They all have very, very, very different usages, but they're all very effective when used properly. And then you have the world of mixed martial arts. Basically what happened was, there's so many different fighting styles that are in the world. Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, Taekwondo, Karate, uh, Kung Fu, you name it. Capoeira, lots, too many to name, shoot fighting. You got a lot of it. And each style has something good that can be utilized. And some has stuff that's really good against that same style. But there was a man who you might know, and I know you guys know, who invented a style called Jeet Kune Do. It's the style of no style. And that man's name was Bruce Lee. Yeah. And what Bruce Lee did, it is very smart and effective. He trained in Kung Fu. And he realized that a lot of the stuff was very effective against other Kung Fu martial artists. And a lot of stuff was not effective against different styles. So he came up with the idea of taking the best things from all the different styles and making one style. Now, he would do things like he used the steps in fencing. On guard, he would use that. And he would eliminate things that didn't necessarily trump that in Kung Fu. He would take punches from boxing and incorporate that stuff into it. So, the style of no style, and I got a feeling we're gonna see a little Bruce Lee very shortly. But, Mixed martial arts is an evolution of that, and there are many different organizations. Perhaps the one that you guys know the best would be the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the UFC. There's also Strike Force. There's also Tri Fighting in Japan. Uh, all similar, very similar, but it was basically taking one style of fighting versus another style of fighting. But after that, they all had the same realization as Bruce Lee. If I want to compete, I'm going to have to learn some of this other stuff here, right? You have people who are very good strikers. It means they have good kicks and good punches. But they went up against wrestlers, and they could win. But if the wrestler was able to get in and take them down, usually they didn't know how to escape that, and the wrestler would have his way with the fighter on the ground. So they realized, well, I better learn those skills as well. So UFC is another great combat sport. There are combat sports from across the entire world. Right? One we talked a little bit, one of them we do here, but one of them that I like is sumo wrestling from Japan. Sumo wrestling are in two enormous wrestlers. There's a ring, and in the middle of the ring there's two marks. You both start on the marks, they collide, and the goal is to either get the person to the ground or push them outside of the ring. It's a very good one. Boxing, of course, is my favorite. Uh, I don't mind UFC, it's not my favorite, but I don't mind watching that. And there are many different styles. Are any of you 
involved in any martial arts? If so, write down in the chat box. Please put any martial arts, whether you take it right now or you took it when you were four or five, any training or any uh, self-defense martial arts that you have been involved with in your life in the chat box. Life is long. You must know how to protect yourself. Because as controversial as it may be, it's not really controversial at all, both of these guys have wives here, okay? Now, if some guy walks up on the street and tries to, to uh, accost the wonderful Tanya Morn Hinway, please don't do that. It may not work. So he's got to protect his family, all right? Now, he's a big, tough guy. Now, what would you do in that situation? Would you turn and run away and let your wife get beat up? I'm assuming not. Absolutely not. I would protect her. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the right answer. So, you never know. Now, some of you young ladies, some of the young ladies are some of the best martial artists out there. There was a one that was really popular for about 10 years by the name of Ronda Rousey. She was a judo, Olympic level judo champion. And she had a lot of success. And you never know who's going to come which way and how you're going to have to defend yourself. So, Saying that to say, we're going to watch some videos very shortly. I'm going to... He's getting all choked up. You know, he, he's really, he loves this stuff. He gets choked up and he breaks down sometimes. We'll give him a moment. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. <laughs> we're going to pass it over to Mr. Morning anyway, because I'm going to show you, hands down, some of this great footage. All right, people. Yes. Great topic. Boxing, MMA. Judo, karate, all these things are wonderful to watch. You're going to see some good videos on that stuff as well. And Mr. Shoemaker is the man to lead virtually this week because he loves this stuff. He's passionate. We'll get some good conversations in. Guys, what motivates you to continue to live your life? What motivates you to continue to live your life? I'll start with this one. For me, as you guys know, you guys probably know, it's building healthy relationships. That's been my purpose for a long time. So my point with that is, as I meet people, I try to build healthy relationships with them. You know why? Because maybe I can help them. And more than not, they can help me to reach my goals, to be better than I am today, tomorrow. All right, so building healthy relationships is what motivates me to continue to live. Mr. Mitchell. Family. I have two sons who I love to death, and I have sisters who are back east, mixed family. I always think about my family, all the time, 24-7. Indeed. And Mr. Shoemaker. Well, I, I guess all the above, you know, food, clothes, and fun. You got family, I love the family, all right? Definitely healthy relationship with your friends and the people that you're around, the folks, and just the fun of progressing forward. But on a serious note, really, and Mr. Morehead and I have talked about this frequently, uh, it is the, I, I love having you guys and the energy that I get from you guys and seeing you guys perform the work I have there. Many times, not all the time, many times, I'm a little behind the gun, a little tired coming into class, and I'm like, ooh, a little tired today. And I get the first period, and it says, hey, Mr. Schumann, boom! I'm like a joke light, I'm ready to go, all right, I'm back at it. All right, I don't need coffee, I got that energy. And you know, seeing the growth from some of you guys, when I first started teaching, those kids are, they were 11, 12, 13 years old, now they're 21, 22, 23 years old, and well into their adulthood. And I just love to see the growth of that, and I just love to see positivity in life pushing forward. Indeed. All right, Sports Factor, what is the question today? All right. We talked a little bit about Bruce Lee. Bruce, Bruce Lee made a great movie called Enter the Dragon. In that movie, Bruce Lee fights a seven foot, one inch basketball player. <laughs> Who was that player that he fought? Famous for the sky hook. Mm. Nice, nice. Yeah, I remember those sky hooks, almost unstoppable. Oh, he was a nemesis, 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 nemesis to the Boston Celtics, wasn't he? Oh, he in was. the eighties. Oh, I didn't like that guy much. Goggles and all. Goggles and all. But and incredibly intelligent. Yeah. yeah. Written really great books. Uh, great speaker. Great order. Really, really intelligent. Well, he 
he's so tall, he probably has a long brain. Maybe not. Jolly uh, geographer! <laughs> just trying to there figure out what your brain is like. Then, right? Well, mine's more this, you know. Short, short squad. Short squad. Yeah. All right, Jolly geographer. There's a country of people with long brains. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're on that particular basketball player, the man, the myth, the legend himself is from the city of New York. And he plays or played regularly back in the day at the famed Rucker Park on the East River, where the East River meets <laughs> the certain river. I won't say from the area. What part of town is that? Is Rucker Park Inn. And I'll give you one hint. They are famous for the Globetrotters. Nice. Hey guys, the chef had to go to jail two times. What? Why do you think he had to go to jail the first time? Why? Well, because he beat the eggs. Got out, then had to go back to jail because he got caught whipping the cream. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Save the best for last guys. What kind of biggest school we got? I don't know. Seven, seven or so? Seven, seven, something like that. I mean, it's amazing. We're to the end of the year. One last principle, guys, before we end this video. Think about this. If you're always busy getting even, you'll never get ahead. So when people treat you in a wrong way, say something mean to you, if you spend your time getting even, you'll never get ahead in life. And I have experienced people who like to get even are those people probably you don't want to spend a whole lot of time around. Now, take note of knuckleheads who constantly treat you in the wrong way or who constantly are verbally putting you down. But don't spend a lot of time trying to get even with them. Just move on. Make those type of people, we've talked about it before, make them acquaintances. Don't make them your good friends. And again, an acquaintance is a high and by person. When you see him coming, hi, and keep walking. Yeah, stay and away. Say goodbye. Stay away from the knuckleheads. Those knuckleheads are the bad boys. Because they'll just they'll, they'll take over. I mean, sometimes you have no choice because you work with a couple, but put them up. <laughs> well, for me, it's a little bit different. For you guys, and for me, it's, you know, we like to be around the bad, 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 bad boys. We make you feel so